Hello everyone! Welcome to the last episode of my Scrappy Improv Quilt Along, Scraptastic Calm in the Chaos. This is it! We are putting the finishing touches on this quilt that we've been working on now for eight weeks, actually nine weeks, because I had to skip a week. I am so excited to get this done, see what it looks like, completely finished, and start on the next quilt. <laughs> of course, always, always on to the next one. Uh, before I show you how we're going to finish this, I wanted to give you an update on my finger. I haven't talked about my finger in a while, so I don't know if you can tell from this angle the part that was cut off. <laughs> It's actually looking really good. It's it's hard to see from any other angle, except for this one, that there's anything missing. And my nail has grown back quite a bit. I mean, it's almost a full nail now. So the only issue that I have, I mean, there's not barely any kind of scar tissue or anything, because it's pretty much, it was this whole area here that was cut off um, and if you guys don't know if, if you're just joining me for this video um, rotary cutter accident anyway uh, it's extremely sensitive this whole area here the nerves are really crazy so anytime I hit it or touch it I mean just to touch it it feels so sensitive and so weird so I'm not sure. I know that it'll deaden up a bit, but uh, I think I probably will continue to have sensation issues. But as far as uh, looking weird, I mean, yeah, if you compare it to my other index finger, sure. But it healed really, really nice. So just wanted to update you guys on that. Okay, so we are not going to be binding this quilt but we are going to be facing it so i have squared this up and i actually ended up cutting quite a bit down it ended up being um, about 37 and a half um, i didn't really care too much about getting it perfectly square so i think one side is closer to 38 and the other side is 37 and a half so no big deal. I don't care. <laughs> As you guys know, I'm I'm not too picky. So uh, it's all squared out though. <laughs> it's not really square. It's trimmed evenly, I guess, is, is what I should use. And so now, let me move this out of the way for now. What we're going to do is face it. So this is a little mini quilt that I made. Um, actually... <laughs> This is the one that I was working on when I cut my finger off. Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, this is the quilt that I faced and I haven't even, I don't know if you can see that, I haven't even finished putting my label on. Do you see what I decided to, to cut in corners because of this? Anyway, this is what facing is. So instead of binding, you're, you're finishing it off with strips on the back and then I'm going to show you how to add these corners in so that you can also hang it. So that's what we're going to do today. So what you need is four corners. You can make these anywhere from four and a half inches to five inches square. So four of these, I'm going scrappy, because I think that's, I, I prefer scrappy. But <clears throat> in the beginning of this quilt along, I think I talked about having enough fabric for your, of your calm to use for this purpose. Well, I ended up using a lot more of my calm and I didn't have enough left over. So if you do, and you prefer to use your calm fabric for this, go for it but I I ended up being scrappy so four corners five mine are five inches square 
and then you fold them and press them on the corner. So they're all folded in half now. And then you get four binding strips. Now these two can be really any size. So for this quilt, I think I ended up, these were four inches and then I folded them half. So I just decided to go with a regular width binding strips here. So this is two and a half inches, like a regular binding strip, and I've folded it in half. So I have four of those. Now this is where it differs from a uh, binding on a quilt. You're going to measure each side of your quilt and cut these to four inches shorter than each side. So my quilt is on my first side so one side of my quilt here is I think it's 38 I'll just I, I, I'm pretty positive two of my measurements are 38 so that obviously would be 34 so you guys cut your strips down to four inches shorter from each side. If you've gotten a perfectly square quilt, then all your measurements will be the same. So that is what you're gonna do. And now I will show you how we're gonna put these on. Now, one thing before we start attaching these is your label. If you want to do a label, on your quilt, which you should always do. This is what I came up with for this particular quilt, which I thought was kind of cute and also the easiest possible labels there is. And that is just using a permanent fabric pen. And so I, my name is Scraptastic Calm in the Chaos of this quilt, Lola which is the name that, that's the only name that my husband has ever called me. It's my nickname he gave me a long time ago, and it's what I use uh, as an artist, and the date. So I just wrote it on a piece of fabric that I folded in so there would be no raw edges, and then I top stitched it to one side of this triangle, or one side of the square, and then folded it into a triangle. And so this one will be in the lower left-hand side of the back of the quilt when it is all done. Actually, it'll be like this. So that is where the little label is. Easiest way to do a label. Okay, so with that said, I don't have the space where I am right now to show you one whole side of my quilt at a time. So we're gonna just do, I folded it in half here. So this is the top left hand side of the quilt. To put the, the facing strips on, you're gonna start on the front of your quilt. So you're gonna first take your triangle, your folded square, raw edges here, and match it up on all four of your corners. So raw edges to raw edges here with the folded side in. So you do that to all four corners. You're laying this all nice and flat. Then you take your strip, your facing strip, and you're gonna lay that down just two inches from each corner. So. This is approximately two inches, and you're gonna lay that so the raw edges are together. So again, this is a two and a half inch strip that I folded in half, just like a binding strip, and I place that on the edge of my quilt two inches in so that eventually, when all your strips are laid down, every corner will look like this. So the, 
your triangle, your square folded into a triangle, your corner pieces go down first, then you lay your facing strips just like you would binding strips. This is the front of the quilt. All your raw edges are together two inches from each corner. Now you can do one side at a time or you can use binding clips or you know quilting clips or pins whatever you want to do if you want to do it all at the same time. You are now going to sew this all around the perimeter of your quilt. All your raw edges quarter inch seam all at the same time or if you want to do one side at a time that's fine too. That is your first step. All right so this is what it should look like. You have a quarter inch seam all the way around. So the first thing you need to do is trim up your corners so that when we turn it to the other side you don't have bulk there. So don't cut into your stitches but just trim that down a bit. Next, lay this out and press it nice and flat. So all your facing will look like this, nice and flat. Then do a quarter inch, nothing more than a quarter inch, all the way around on your facing, all the way to all sides of your facing. So I have top stitched, I guess it could be called, all the way around on all the facing, that quarter inch or a little less than quarter inch. It's all done. So now flip it to the other side, to the back side. That's what it looks like. Grab that corner piece, pull it over. You can use a poker to get your corners all nice and neat and that'll help you move this to the other side. You want it to be like that as if you are turning any kind of project. You don't want any of your facing to really show on the front. So after you've turned your corners and you've poked out those corners, go ahead and press that flat like that. So your top stitching now is on this side and your quilt should look like this. That's what it means to face. So I'm going to go ahead and press all my facing to the other side, turn all my corners and come back for the last final step. Just a tiny tip uh, when you're pressing this flat, you might want to use a bit of um, a fabric glue stick or just a Elmer's glue stick or basting glue if you have it uh, right on the inside here um, before you press it because then the iron heat, press, uh, heat presses it, heat sets it, and then you have a much nicer flat finish that won't uh, move on you for the next step. Looks nice. I'm at the bottom left back corner of this quilt and I forgot to mention that if you're going to do this kind of label, be sure that when you initially attach it to the front, that label is facing down because you obviously are going to be flipping it and you need it to face the right way when you flip it to the back. So be sure of that. Now, before I start showing you how I'm going to be stitching this down, um, I just wanna mention that you will not be stitching this, these corner pieces down at all. You're just gonna be stitching the facing because these are for your hanging. Now, obviously the bottom ones you won't need for that, but the top two, uh, you'll need to stick your dowel or your whatever you're going to use to hang it. Um, so don't stitch those down. 
just the facing. So after you have pressed down your facing to the back, and if you've used the little glue, it is nice and flat and ready to be hand sewn with a little ladder stitch. If you want, you can do any kind of stitch that you would like. And in fact, if you don't really care too much, if you used glue, especially if you used a, a specific, specific fabric glue, you probably don't even have to do this step if it's going to be on the wall anyway. But I like to have it nice and, and finished. So, and I've talked before about how much I enjoy doing a ladder stitch and an invisible ladder stitch anyway. So this is really relaxing to me and, and a fun step. So because the stitching that you're doing now, just stitching down this folded edge is not going to be needed for durability or, you know, longevity. Your stitches don't have to be very small, so you could actually make them pretty big as you go and then it wouldn't take very long at all. Uh, it still does not take very long to do this, and if you just put some music on or a podcast or something, it goes fast. So a ladder stitch, if you want to, if you haven't done this before, basically if you in visualize an invisible ladder where this edge you're sewing this folded edge down to your quilt here in a line so your ladder is horizontal your rails of the ladder are here and here and then the vertical rungs of the ladder are what attaches the stitches together or the the two surfaces together so Right now, my thread is in the fold, so I need to attach these together vertically. So I just put my needle in, and you can either put it in the your backing here, just your backing, or you can do it into the batting as well. Either way is fine, just don't put it through to your front. And then you slide that over horizontally to wherever you want to pull your thread out. So I'm doing about probably half an inch stitches on this. Again, you can do as small or as big as you'd like. And then right down back into this folded edge, you stick your needle and you take another stitch. And that is how you do an invisible ladder stitch because of the way you're, you're stitching that, eventually you're not going to be able to see the stitches at all, which is why it's an invisible stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and then the quilt will be done. So if you stick around to the end, not only will I reveal the finished product of mine, but I also have some volunteers who have provided me their pictures of their progress pics of their quilts. Now, of course, they're not done because they didn't have the advantage of this video and time. <laughs> so it'll just be progress pics of theirs, but it's just been so much fun to see some of those pictures and what you guys have come up with. I it, it fills me with such joy to see someone, you know, this has really been my first opportunity to come up with an original design and to see people doing their own twist on my design. And oh, it makes me so proud. <laughs> <laughs> so stick around for that little slideshow at the end and I will see you back for the reveal and here it is done I got it out of the wash and dryer so all the fabric has shrunk and this quilting stitches now stand out a lot better I also have two vintage yardsticks 
that are in the top and the bottom to make it nice and framed like that. So that's probably what I'll use to hang it on the wall. I did add a bit of a an additional spiral with hand stitches. I just felt like it needed a bit more impact right in the center as opposed to just that starting two inch. So it I I ended up taking out maybe two or three stitches just to get it going in the right direction. But it was so simple to do, it took me five minutes. So if you guys would like to do that to have a bit more impact in your quilts, go ahead. And then I just did a little bit of an embroidery center something. I don't even know what I did in the center. So I love the raw edge here that I attached to the border. I think that texture, it's fraying now and it's just adding to the whole concept of the quilt and that is calm and chaos. Well, chaos is very messy, isn't it? So it kind of makes sense that, that that should be fraying and I just love that. I love that texture. So thank you all so much for joining me for this, my first quilt along, Scraptastic Calm in the Chaos. I am going to have, I'm formulating the next one it won't be for a little bit, but it's gonna be much more traditional piecing. I won't have any rules about tools for that one, but there is going to be improv elements in it as well. It's gonna be very scrappy. It's a style of quilt that I've been wanting to try for a long time, and um, it'll give me a lot to work with, a lot to show you guys, and it's gonna be more of a lap size quilt and it'll probably take a bit more, so it'll have, you know, it'll be uh, a more robust episodic quilt along, if you will. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna call it an actual quilt along or something similar, but um, I'm sorry that there is shadows. I, I was trying to find, it's 27 right now and a bit windy as it normally is out here on the prairie. So, uh, I will have way more pictures and a little video at the end of this video so that you can see it closer and inside as well as a, a, some pictures of those of you that are in the process of making your own and thank you so much for letting me use those pictures. I had a really good time with this and I hope that you did too. It's, it's nice to, to get those creative juices flowing on such a crappy uh, year that we've had and to demonstrate it in some kind of art form as I think that we all should. We all should tackle other areas of our brain and, and get them distracted from what's going on around us. So thank you again for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, and I will see you soon. Bye.